Hey guys, I'm Avesh. This is the 14th video of .NET MIUI with Sync Fusion Control series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get started. In the previous session, we focused on sorting the columns in the data grid. We have also examined the row and column styling and conditional styling features of the data grid control. We have concluded the data grid session by understanding how real-time update works and we have also learned how to export the data grid data to Excel and PDF formats. In this session, we will learn scheduler control of Sync Fusion. Schedulers are common controls used in appointment scheduling applications, also known as appointment booking or appointment management software, are widely used across various industries to streamline and automate the process of booking appointments, meetings and services. Appointment schedulers are versatile tools that offer convenience to business and their customers or clients by allowing appointments to be made online, reducing no-shows through reminders and optimizing staff and resource allocation. These applications help business in various industries provide better customer service and manage their schedules efficiently. Here are some common applications and industries where appointment schedulers are utilized. Healthcare providers such as doctors, dentists, therapists and clinics use appointment scheduling software to manage patient bookings. Patients can book appointments online, receive reminders and view availability. IT support and tech service companies use appointment booking to schedule service calls, repairs and tech support appointments. Government offices and agencies use appointment scheduling software to manage appointments for services like passport applications, driving license renewals and tax consultations. Law firms, accounting firms, consultants and other professional service providers use appointment booking software to manage client meetings, consultations and appointments. Schools, colleges and universities use appointment schedulers to manage parent-teacher conferences, advising sessions and counseling appointments. Even planning companies use appointment scheduling software to manage appointments with clients for event consultations, venue tours and event planning sessions. Not only these, schedulers are widely used in saloons and spas, fitness and wellness, financial services, government agencies, retail stores, car dealerships, real estate photography and many more. Hence, it is very important to learn Sync Fusion Scheduler Control. Building a scheduler control from scratch can vary in difficulty depending on several factors including your programming skills, the complexity of the features you want to implement and the platform or framework you are using. Let's look at some of the considerations. Your proficiency in programming and the specific technologies you are using will play a significant role. If you are an experienced developer, you will have a better understanding of the necessary concepts and techniques. On the other hand, if you are new to programming or the platform you are working with, it can be more challenging. The complexity of a scheduler control can vary widely based on the features you want to implement. A basic scheduler that displays events on a calendar grid is relatively very straightforward. However, if you need to add features like recurring events, resource grouping, notifications or complex UI interactions, the complexity increases. The difficulty also depends on your platform or framework. Building a scheduler control for a web application may involve different technologies and challenges than creating one for a desktop application or mobile app. Designing an intuitive and user-friendly interface for your scheduler can be a significant challenge in itself. Properly handling user interactions such as drag and drop for event scheduling requires careful consideration. Thoroughly testing your scheduler control to ensure it works correctly and is free of bugs is a time-consuming task. You will need to validate it across various scenarios and edge cases. Depending on the scale of your application, optimizing the performance of your scheduler control can be a significant challenge. Ensuring smooth rendering and responsiveness, especially with a large number of events, can be demanding. Having said that, building a basic scheduler control might not be overly challenging for an experienced developer. Creating a feature-rich and polished scheduler with advanced capabilities can be a complex and time-consuming endeavor. It may also involve a significant amount of development and testing effort. For many projects, especially in professional or commercial contexts, it's more practical to use existing scheduler components or libraries that are readily available. These components have been thoroughly tested and come with a wide range of features, saving development time and ensuring a reliable scheduling solution. Hence, I recommend to use the Sync Fusion Scheduler Control for developing your applications. 
The scheduling control was brilliantly developed by the Syncfusion team to function in both Windows and mobile apps. They have enhanced the scheduling control with all necessary capabilities as well as cutting edge features that are unique to this type of software. Syncfusion scheduler component for .NET MIUI is designed to help you implement scheduling and calendar functionality in your mobile applications. It typically includes features such as event management, appointment scheduling, recurring appointments and various calendar views including day, week, month, agenda, etc. You can typically customize the appearance and behavior of the scheduler to match the specific needs and styles of your application. This might include customizing event templates, themes, and more. Syncfusion scheduler components typically support data binding, allowing you to connect the scheduler to your data source such as database or an API to dynamically populate and update events. Users can interact with the scheduler by adding, editing, and deleting appointments or events. It also supports drag and drop functionality for easy event rescheduling. If your application needs to manage events for different resources or categories, the scheduler often includes support for resource grouping, allowing you to display events categorized by resources. Depending on the version and features provided by Syncfusion, you may have options for setting reminders and notifications for scheduled events. Let's now switch to coding and get going. Let's use the same project that we have been using from previous sessions. Let me add the NuGet package for scheduler over here. Right click manage NuGet packages. Let's search for syncfusion.maui.scheduler. We browse for that package, choose MAUI scheduler and change the version to 2.5. That's a version I currently have with the community edition. Let me install this package. The package is successfully installed. Let's now create a scheduler view. Right click on the view, add new item, choose .NET MAUI, choose content page over here and paste scheduler view.xaml as a file name. Remove the label from here, switch to the Syncfusion toolbox, scroll down to locate for scheduler control, drag and drop the scheduler control over here under the vertical stack layout. Now that we have added the scheduler, let me save this file and switch to the model and start creating the schedule info model. Let me create a new item and choose a class and change it to from class one to schedule info. Let me rename this, save. Now in the schedule info, let me make it as a public class. We need to have a from to an event name and location. For every event, we will have a from date. So let me create a property date time, make it as from and then we need to have a two property as well. So let's say property, date time again, and two. Now once this is done, we need to create the event name as well. So let me create a property string and call it as event name. Let's also create a location for the event. We don't need event description right now, but for now let's create a location property string and name it as location. I'll be creating more properties under schedule info. For now, let's keep it simple with from to and event name. Let's now create a schedule repository class. Right click on the model, add new item and name this class as schedule repository.cs. Let me make it as public class and let me create a constructor here. Ideally in real-time applications this class is used to connect to the APIs to pull the data. However in this scenario let's create some sample data to proceed further. So let me create public observable collection of schedule info that we created and name it as let's name this method as get schedule infos. Let's create a list info object of observable collection of schedule info and then let's create event date as date time dot now dot let me add few days for this current event that we are going to show in the scheduler calendar. Let's say this is, event is occurring in three days. Let me define that event as well under events equal to new array. Currently I'll create one event and going forward I'll demonstrate by adding more events to this array. Now let's say new and say from equal to new date time of event date dot year comma event date dot month comma day and let's say this event is starting at 8 a.m. We create this also then we create two equal to let me copy it from here let's say this event is ending at 10 a.m. We put it as 10. We also define the event name as event name is equal to meeting with Paul. Let's loop through these events which are available from an API and let's add it to the list info object. Let me create a for loop here. I is less than events dot length i plus plus 
let's create where let me create an info object which is nothing but new schedule info now in here let me add the properties we'll add the properties as from equal to events of i dot from similar to and then i'll say event name equal to events of i dot event name that's it once this is done let's add this info object to the list info and then we will return the list info that's it we are done with the schedule repository let's now add schedule layout view model right click on the view model add new item choose the class again let's name this class as schedule layout view model a center and let me create a public class and create one observable collection of data within this public class let's create one constructor as well and let's create a method called generate source similar to the sessions that we have done earlier this generate source will return the data from the repository that we have created so we'll have repository equal to new schedule repository and from there we will return the schedule infos and give it back to the data this is the data that we are going to bind to the xaml file let's now switch to the xaml file and bind this data to the scheduler let me add the namespace xml namespace we call this namespace as binding which is clr namespace syncfusion app dot source dot view model now that we have defined the binding we can use the binding for this scheduler control so let me add appointment source equal to binding of the data that we have got now let me also create some more properties which is a height request let me keep the height request at 600 let me keep the view as week instead of month so that we can see the current week over here let me also add the appointment mapping to the scheduler so let me add scheduler colon sf scheduler dot appointment mapping and we will map the properties to this appointment mapping so we'll add scheduler colon scheduler appointment mapping which is a property and we will say end time is nothing but our property too and we will add start time which is from and then we'll add the subject which is nothing but our event name now we, we will also add the binding context over here that says scheduler colon sf scheduler dot binding context and we'll add that binding context for this binding binding colon schedule layout view model and we will call the x name as calendar type view model that's all we now have the binding and we have binded the data over here and we have added the additional properties related to the appointment binding let's now start the application and see the output the output is showing the employee grid that we have done in our previous session so let me switch to the app.xaml appshell.xaml file and add another flyout item before that let me stop this application and call it as calendar list let me give a title as scheduler route as scheduler data view and change this view from employee grid to scheduler view right class scheduler let me restart this application now notice that we now have the scheduler view and let's see that if our appointment is showing up look at that the appointment that we have created or the event that we have created is displayed from 8 a.m to 10 a.m to recap the steps we have created a schedule info class file and we have created a schedule repository which returns the collection observable collection of schedule infos we have created one event and binded that event to the data file using our view model class file once we have done that we have created the xaml file created the scheduler over here and we have binded the data from the source binding which is from our view model file once that is done we have mapped the properties of start time end time and subject so that the event shows up in the scheduler we have also defaulted the view as week over here so that the output is rendered in the week model let's now understand how we can add recurring events to the scheduler before adding the code for recurring events let me take you through the recurring rules that are available in sync fusion recurring rules are used to define recurring appointments in scheduler control the recurring rules have a wide range of characteristics Let's examine those additional properties for defining recurring rules. Frequency property plays a major role for defining recurring rules and we can define the frequency as daily, weekly, monthly, yearly and every weekday. Interval is an integer which can be tied to the frequency. Count is another property which defines how many number of times the event can occur for a given frequency. We do have another property called until to replace the count and defines the end date of the frequency of recurring appointments. By day is a property to define the recurring events on given days. In the below example, we have defined the event to occur daily until 24th May 2028 
on all Mondays and Wednesdays. We do have buy Monday and buy set position, week ST and EX date as another properties which come into factor while defining the recurring appointments. Now let's use these properties and add recurring events to our code. Let's now switch back to the code and enhance the schedule info object to add more properties. Let me add a couple of properties here which are property and we call this as string and we will add recurring rule property. Also to distinguish between different appointments and events we'll add a background color. Let's add another property and we'll use the solid color brush and name this as background. Let's now switch to the repository file here and let me add another event. Right now we have meeting with Paul and I will add another event which will be a daily sync up meeting. So let me rename this as daily sync up meeting. Also let me add another meeting and I'll call it as weekly sync up meeting. Now let me add a recurring rule here. Recurring rule and this will be empty for now. Let me place the same recurring rule for the rest of the two events and change this recurring rule to frequency FAQ equal to daily with an interval of every day. So I will say interval is equal to one. Let me copy this rule for weekly as well and change it from daily to weekly. That's all. Now once I am done, let me also add the color which is a solid brush and I will add another property here color equal to solid brush with some random color that I have chosen. I'll also add the color over here and then I'll choose another color for weekly so that we can distinguish the events clearly. Now once it is done, we just need to map them in the for loop. So I will say background equal to events of i dot color and then we will add the recurring rule. Before adding the recurring rule, we need to check if the recurring rule is present or not. So I will add one condition below this stating if recurring rule is not equal to null then only add the recurring rule. That's it. That's the change we need to do in the schedule repository. Now let me switch back to the XAML file and add the background here. Background equal to background and then I will add recurring rule as recurring rule which is from the data property. Let me restart the application again. Let me do one more change to distinguish them. Let me change the timing for each of these events. So let me switch back to the repository file here. Let's say 8 to 10. I would say this would be from 10 to 11. This would be from 11 to 12 so that we can see the events organized in a neat manner. Let me restart the application again. Notice that we have the daily sync up meetings and they're all starting on 5th. That's because we started the event date from add days plus 3 which is from current date plus 3. So let me change this a bit and I'll add recurring date again here which is nothing but let's say that let's start it from today itself. So I'll copy this recurring date everywhere instead of event date I will change it to recurring date so that the event starts from today and you can also see the weekly event. Let me restart the application again and may scroll to the top. Notice that we have the single event and we have the daily sync up meeting starting and also we have the weekly sync up starting from Wednesday. Let me go to the next screen. Notice that we have all the daily meetings here in every week. Scheduler control provides an option to switch between multiple views using allowed views property. Let's evaluate that we have allowed views equal to day, default, month and rest of them. Let's add week, month, day, timeline day, all of these properties. I will explain you in details in the next session. However, the moment I add the allowed views and switch back to the emulator, you see an icon over here so that you can choose the view. The moment I click on the icon, you'll be presented with multiple options. Let me restart the application to make it work. Notice that you have an icon at the right top corner and then you can choose the day selection or the month selection or you can choose the timeline day as well with all the timelines over here. Timeline week view and timeline work week and timeline month views which we have chosen in the allowed views property. I hope you now have a solid understanding of the scheduler control. In our upcoming session, we will go through all of its features. Till then, thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.